<laughs> All right, let's do it. Come on. All right, let's do it. Come let's on. go. Are we Ready. doing a show or what? Hey, we're going to do a show or what? Or what? Or what? Or what? Or what? what? Good morning and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I got the Indian in the house. True Mahan. And old Blue Eyes. Yeah, New York. You know what's up. You know what's up. I got another Indian, White Crow Indian in the house. Today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. A.K.A. Big Anger from the CBS crew. Can't be stopped. Welcome to the show, Anger. Woo! Yeah. Anger. Hey, 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 hey. How you doing, Anger One? Can't be stopped crew. Yeah. And, um, thanks for having me on, man. It's yeah, been a little man. while. Yeah, it's been a little Dude, while. Dude, you a fucking watershed episode. If you don't know, <sighs> Mr. and Mrs. Earbuds, you better go back and find out about one of the craziest police chase stories you ever heard. Ever. You'll feel it in your bones, motherfucker. Mm. This guy had a fucking great story. What, what was that? Epi- what number story. episode was what, that? Do you remember? Now I'm going to leave it as a 117? mystery. 117. 117. No, I, I feel like, no, maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking lucky. Yeah, maybe he's thinking lucky neighborhood. 17. 117 you know? Street, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> 24 7 i don't know what we, we we need to figure that out you know fucking uh if you guys didn't tune into that show it's a heavy show heavy um my man fucking th- how many how many seven or nine uh i got shot uh three different times two uh, in my stomach 115. 115. one through my arm went into my stomach and then another one up in my shoulder so Fuck i wish it was not, i wish one. it was seven or nine right 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 it's four mm-hmm. three or four three or four three or four yeah fucking cops unloaded on his ass so yes, listen sir. to that man it was it's, it's one a one heavy five one 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 five episode one fifteen i was close was hard close. to kill right you're real yeah. close. hard to kill i was trying to screenshot it yesterday but my phone is shot out so it could, wouldn't screen <laughs> the cops shot yeah, your yeah, phone yeah yeah uh, hey so wait a second though <clears throat> yes, sir. so so listen that's 115 we're on 373 that's crazy y'all been cooking think about that cooking cooking yeah so anger i'm just gonna say i don't even know maybe i'm full of shit. maybe i'm the fucked up one but you are coming in here, and there's something different about you. Yeah. What is that? What's going on? I really feel this. It's a different. It's kind of more of a, a like a sort of a tranquil anger. Well, I think it's no I, more anger. I think though, right? Fa- I think it's facial products. No. Oh, okay, it's a oh, fuck. I really I think it's facial skincare. No, no. My wife, my wife got me some really good stuff. Some uh, multiple uh, what creams and <laughs> men's things. Your skin or? is looking very clear. I came I mean, in. I'm like, oh my god. He does have a face like a 16 year old right yes, now. Yes, that is true. My wife, uh, she's big into lotions and potions. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, she, you know, as w- most, you know, your woman's in the mirror doing her thing, yeah. you know, getting her all, you yeah. know, she's getting dolled up for the day or right. whatever, you know. And uh, I was kind of, you know, looking in the mirror and being like, and she's like, oh, well, I can get you some. And before I know it, you know, all these different products show up. And so I have a whole regiment, you yeah. know, that I follow. And um, I, I really like it. But what, think it's... Is, what are you doing? Like, is it a toner? Does somebody come in and slap you in your cheeks with some no, aqua no, no. velva? Just a, just a couple different things in the in the morning and in the evening. Some little eye cream. You know what I Get mean? Get the something. fuck out of here. Eye I mean, you cream? Think what am I going to do? Last time I'm going to cry... Yeah. Fucking with my fucking, you know, my emotions on my sleeve, yeah, right? Yeah, you were getting shot. And then I'm not going to bring anything a little, you know, tantalizing to the table. Yeah. <laughs> That's you know? true. That's true. No. Gotta bring, uh, bring, it, yeah. yeah. I got to bring a little, you know. Balancing the Well, I'll tell out. you what. It's fucking working. There you go. I'll say that much. There you go. I'll say that much. There you go. Um, but you know what I would say also? Yeah. Be, beyond the skin uh, care products. Right. <clears throat> um. I definitely was in a, uh, well, just recently I was telling Lucky I just joined the 50 Club, so I, j- I turned 50 years old. Right on. Welcome oh. in. Woo! 50's I, the new 50. I feel yeah. like for a few, for a couple years before turning 50, I definitely was in this, like, 
gray area, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out where black and white laid in my life. Um, <laughs> I think last time I was, you know, within the graffiti culture, I'm always, um, I was more going by AKA, which was, I was just trying not to be an, um, I was trying not to bring negativity into yeah. my life at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I said, fuck it. You know what I mean? I put a lot. Well, uh, you know, uh, being being somebody that carries a name like that means that you got to be on. You got to be in character a lot. Right. 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 Um, oh, yeah. I, I can't be in character when I'm at home. You know what I mean? I can't be in character with my wife. I can't be in character with my kids. Mm -hmm. Um it wasn't the first time that I tried to kind of go out of character and kind of still be a graffiti artist, still be interested in my culture, mm -hmm. but kind of um, not bring, you know, um, not bring those type of vibes into you, into who you are. But at the end of the day, you, you also have to accept that you, um, you put in work for this, you know, this certain thing, you compacted it for, you know, over 25 years, Lamented 30 it. years, yeah, Legacy. you know, yeah, and um, can't deny that to a point. So yeah, I mean, I, I I think I've come to the terms of being, still being a good person, yeah, within being in character. If this that makes is, sense. it does make sense. I guess my question, kind of too, in this, there's no answer, but it's like, can't an angry person be a good person? I think so. I think anger anger isn't a I think well, I, people would say anger is a is is a bad is a bad emotion. I've I've um, I think uh, I think I've been able to harness my anger a lot better with 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 the help of my wife. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, and my kids, and just growing, you know, growing emotionally secure with myself. Uh, um, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at in life. Right. If that makes sense. It does. And what so, do you think about that, Steve? Can somebody? I think anger is the least angry person that we have on the show when we have him on. It doesn't, you know, that's just a name. Right. It's a name that he worked hard for and it's part of him to an extent. And I'm talking about me from the outside, how I see it, right. but it has nothing to do with like, yeah, maybe he was anger and that was his name as a younger guy and he's now matured and growing into a father and different things and it's like, that's just the name. That's his, his uh, m what is it, monarch or? Uh, that's, that's his um, moniker. Moniker. His you moniker. know, moniker. But it, it's interesting because you meet the guy and you're like, oh man, maybe he was angry when he was young because he's not angry now, you know, or, you know, he ran that out until he couldn't, but. You know, I man. It, I, I, I think it was just a sign of the times. I think you know. I think mo a lot of people were angry in the '80s sure. and in the '90s. Sure. I don't think there was a you know um, a lot of ha things to be happy about. I mean, there's not as many things to be happy about, but you adjust to your your surroundings. You know. I forget so, how old I am, and then today, fucking Schumann reminded me, <laughs> and then you remind me in the back how old you are, and it kind of made me reflect. I mean, I remember when you were a fucking kid running around on Melrose. A kid, bro. Still a kid running around on Melrose. Still in, still in your teens. Yeah. You know. I was. Um, and and now, uh, you know. L listen, let me let me ask you. Fuck. And I think we might have talked. Let me about ask this. you something. Okay. Because can I ask you a question sure. about yeah. back in the day? Yeah. Supermax. Yeah. And you can say no. I don't want to talk about it. Sure. I was reminded earlier. That you, I was telling my buddy Armin, Andre Legacy, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm going to go do a podcast. You remember Lucky, da 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 da. And he's like, oh, yeah, Lucky. He's like, didn't he fight with uh, Exhibit? And I was yep. like, yeah. Yep. And I was like, I didn't, I never knew why. Everybody always asked me, why did they fight? Why did they fight? And I was wanting to ask you now that I'm here because I'm role reversal. Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, what yeah. happened? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, yeah, I talk to Exhibit these days. Okay. You know? And uh, we had squashed that a few years, about 15 years ago. <laughs> but, uh, a few years, 15 years ago. <laughs> I, I mean, to be. To White be, Crow stirring me, shit up me, again. Yeah, we yeah, just yeah. patched and that up. And then we just had a big fucking cookies party. 
and I got on the phone uh, phone with him, and, and we invited him to be like uh, uh, one of the guys that wanted to deal in the promotions, his right. brand and Napalm, and, right. and he came down, and I saw him, and we chopped it up, and, and it was all good. Uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, what well, was it over, though? Because um, <laughs> he was DJ. Listen, man, he was a DJ back then. He wasn't uh, a rapper. No, he was rapping back then. Oh, I thought yeah, he was Yeah, it was a DJ. Alvin. Yeah, it was him. Okay. Alvin. Um, and he had just kind of moved here from... Arizona or New Mexico, I gotcha. forget exactly where he came from. Gotcha. But uh, he had uh, he had he had grabbed something from the store. He had what? taken something from the store, a jersey. But that wasn't the problem, right? Because I wasn't working that day when he did. The problem was that the following day or the next day or something, he's wearing the jersey. Oh no! On Melrose, yeah. And Mark, the financer of the thing, I know Mark. Fox, right? Mark Fox, Fox yeah. says to him, uh, "Where'd you get that?" Sure. And instead of him saying anything other than Lucky gave it to me. Right. That comes back to me. And he's like, hey, bro, where the... And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then I called him. I told him it's on on site. He started getting crazy on the phone. I'm like, bring your ass over here. <sighs> and fucking... He ended up showing up like an hour later. Nice. And I locked up the fucking front doors and went to the back. But yeah, yeah. Now you can't leave. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. We locked. I locked the front doors and closed the store, and we there walked around back. And there uh, you go. Yeah. Anyways, man. Uh, That's what the Melrose alleys are for, right? Yeah. Smoking yeah, your yeah, weed yeah, and getting yeah, your uh, yeah, getting out. Yeah. yeah. So shout out to Exhibit, man. He's, oh yeah. Uh, you know we were young and. And it's all good, man. <laughs> Sean loves that story. Look at Sean's yeah, yeah, face, yeah, bro. Yeah. He's just grinning like a motherfucker right Exhibit, now. if you have a different mm. version of that story, my friend, you are more than welcome to come down uh, here. I want to have you on anyways to come down here and talk about there it. There you go. Anyway, so what I wanted to ask you now. <laughs> yes, it's called anger because he makes everyone else angry. No. Nah, <laughs> What is the, hey, uh, well, big shout out, man. I, I, I see you guys posting. Listen, if people don't know, man, um, there was a graffiti artist that was from their crew named Skate. The rest in peace, Skate. Um, yes, and he was uh, just a huge influence, man. He was almost like a big brother, maybe even father figure to a lot of younger guys below him. He kind of had a lot of respect with a lot of guys, not only in the graffiti community, but in in some neighborhood culture as well. So he was one of these guys that was able to walk both lines and, and get kind of like common respect in a yeah. lot of different areas, right? Yeah. He and was, um, well, yeah, he was from, you he know, was he's from, from eight, he was from 18th Street. Is that right? Yeah, because when I met him, he used to live down off of, uh, what's the shadow, in the Shadow Park. Right. The Shadow Park hood, which okay. was uh, Kenmore... Kenmore and Six. He lived on yeah, yeah, Kenmore, Kenmore and Six. By the bowling alley. And they had a, their yeah. little neighborhood was right off of Shadow Park yeah, in yeah, yeah. Not Beverly or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, he was, uh, I guess that he got cool with those dudes because he lived in the neighbor in their neighborhood. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they called him Largo from, from 1-8. Is that right? Yeah. And then he was and from he was Lads. Lad, yeah, yeah, he was from Lads. He was from Chaos. He was from right, SR, right. which were all Sacred, uh, right. Sacred right, right, which were all gangs in the Miracle Mile right, area. Right, 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 yeah. Um, for the most part, you know, Gardner Park area, Gardner all Park, that, all that right. type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then he was from CBS LOD. He started MTA, which is MTA is one of the you know a big crew from LA. Still, um, still a big, still you know wow. popular. And they see that I mean, man. They, I'm learning right now. I didn't even know all that about Skate. Oh yeah, he definitely. Um, I mean, he grew up a uh, street kid in Hollywood, you right. know? He grew up in Hollywood Boulevard when it was cool to be on Hollywood Boulevard. Right, right, you know? right, right, um, yeah. I, when I met him, we rolled up into squats like it wasn't nothing. He knew everybody in the squat, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, he was able, he was a down-ass motherfucker. Uh, when I got into CBS, we got I got in at Fairfax High, 88. Um, 88. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I just remembered this that we had we had gotten into a fight with a bunch of Persian dudes because we had some dudes that went to fucking Beverly High School and there's a lot of Persians there. Right. And so um, we had told Skate about that and we had gotten down with the crew and then we ended up in the Beverly Center and we ended up at the bottom floor going upwards of the escalators of the escalators on the <laughs> on the yeah. La Cienega side yeah yeah when it was you know this is 88 so it's yeah, old school Beverly yeah. Center yeah 
And somehow, so when everybody went to the Beverly Center, we, we get up to the, like the second and third floor, and then we see a couple of the Persian dudes that we had beef with, and they're coming down the escalator, and then behind them. We see Skate and Creeper. Creeper was like a, this badass Russian dude that was from Scandals also. He was also from Scandals, which was like a small little gang also in that area. Um, and um, they both are coming down like that. And we see these dudes and they, those dudes duck into the parking lot right there. And um, I remember Skate rolling. And he had a, he always like when I first met him, he had that rolled up that rolled up newspaper stuck in the back of his pocket you know what i mean just tightly yeah yeah yeah. like a newspaper weapon newspaper weapon yeah Yeah. (laughs) tightly wound up you know what i mean like a metal bar one's yeah one's rolled up tight like it wasn't like just bats training dogs or something yeah he's just rolling with that shit in the back of his pocket right and then (laughs) fuck this shit was badass dude so we roll into the into the parking lot and the persian dudes are there and all of a sudden creeper fucking Throws a flying kick, dude, and fucking just kicks the Persian dude in his fucking chest. The dude goes flying. Skate rolls up to the other dude, beats his fucking ass. And then, um, you know, he just said, like, yo, these are my little homies, but, you know, don't, you know, don't fuck with them more. This is CBS crew, whatever. He claimed his neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, shit. Like, this is fucking awesome. Awesome. This is awesome. awesome. Got the big brother. Well, yeah, I had a big brother that was... (laughs) You know, I mean, those dudes showed me the ways of the streets, mm-hmm. you know, for 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 the first handful of years that I was in right. the streets, you know what right. I mean? From 88 to like 93 when he passed away, he right. was he was definitely my mentor. He's definitely never, I mean, he kicked my ass a couple of times when mm-hmm. I was drunk, you know what I mean? Didn't have no <laughs> problem just, you know, slapping me up and being like, dude, you're fucking faded. Like, right. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck out of here. Everybody you know? needs that once in a while. Everybody needs Everybody that. Needs that once every once every drunk ass dude kicking. needs a ass kicking. Yeah, I think That's every for sure. dude needs ass kicking. For sure. Yeah. Um <clears throat> he and he passed away. He got hit by a train. Yes, sir. You got uh Panorama City, uh nineteen ninety three. He was um he was hitting trains with Big Five and his girlfriend Yen. And then Skate had um Skate was hooked up with a girl from Beverly High School, Becky. They had like a really good life with her, you know, because she had good money. She had money, and you know, being a street kid, he could fucking go anywhere he wanted to eat, you know. So like, when I met Skate, he was like, I don't know, at that time he was too. He was just he was a, just a big dude, but like then all of a sudden he got big, you know what I mean? Like he just. Jerry's Deli big. You yeah. Know? Yeah. 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 He was living good. He was living good, you know? And um, so he changed a lot over the years. Um, and he ended up getting together with Blossom. Blossom was a, was, is now the kind of the, the de facto leader of MTA because they kind of started that crew together. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a chick. He, huh? A chick, yeah. She, he left Becky. And got with Blossom, and then Blossom had a crew. You know what I mean? Had a, a few chicks that she rolled with, Barry, and um, forgot her, uh, the other chick's name. But she had a you know a bunch of NTQ, and it, it, there was NTS, which was Notorious Kings. Mm-hmm. They were the the bus bombers. Fucking NTQ was Notorious and Queens. Queens, yeah. And she was like an NTQ, so she had all the NTQ chicks that would you know roll with her and shit like. And she ba- Blossom's a badass bitch. You know what I mean? She'll. She'll put hands on some fools uh-huh. for sure. Um, anyways, they were in the yard <clears throat> and they were hitting trains. And where the trains are, there's a curve where they come around. And um, I believe that <clears throat> probably a combination of him being such a, a um, looking out for everybody first Mm -hmm. um he made sure that everybody got out of the way when the train was coming which i think everybody thought it was a freight train but it ended up being an amtrak um and then he was hit by the amtrak because he was probably slowed down by jerry's deli you know and um you know he lost his life that day i mean the train obliterated him you know it was you know probably one of the only things that could could have taken him out and right, as right, as, right, we, right. as we looked at it back then you right. know um 
That must have been pretty horrendous that for his friends out of there. Crazy. Yeah, no it was so. tough. Well, you know, and and he had gone through a big transitional time in his life where he kind of, you know, he came from homelessness and the streets, and then he, you know, got with Becky, and he kind of transcended out of that, and he could have kept on going with that, but he just loved he loved the streets, you know what I mean? Just like everybody else, he loved racking racking shit. He loved. Yeah, the lifestyle. Just paint, just going and painting all the time. He could have painted all the time with Becky. Becky loved him because she finally got somebody to acknowledge her. You know what I mean? Right, and right, kind of right. and, and, and like you know, she she wasn't the cutest chick. You know what I mean? Or anything like that. But she she got a uh, confidence from being with Skate, and then Skate got the comfortability of being with her. What you? Yes, sir. You said you said. Everybody thought it was a freight train, but it turned out to be an Amtrak. For the people who don't understand why that would catch somebody unawares, or how did that affect the accident? Um, well, the speed of a train. So you got a freight train that's going, you know, seven miles an hour, ten miles an hour, and you got an Amtrak train that's going thirty to seventy miles an hour, right? And when you have a curve. When, so when you look off, when you're painting the trains, depending where you're going, you're looking west. Right. And probably about five, if I remember the yard right, maybe about 500 to 1,000 feet down, it, the, 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 it starts to turn. The tracks start to turn like that. So the trains will blow their horn, you know. Do, 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 you, whatever horn they have. To let people know. To let people know they're coming around the bend. But when you're out, when you're right there, you're just you just heard the, you just heard it, and then you see a light coming, right? Right, because it's at night, and then it's at night, and so depth you have depth perception. You know what I mean? You have your um, you're coming out of darkness because your lights. You're, I mean, your eyes need to adjust to the darkness, right? So you're practicing so that you blind. can see better, right? Right, and the more that you get. You know, all of a sudden, if light gets in your eyes, you yeah. can't see as good as right you could before. You the could pupils you, are all fucked yeah. up. Yeah, like when we're painting trains, we don't want any lights outside lights coming in because we want to just just like a raccoon. You know what I mean? You adjust your eyes to the light, to the to what's right there, and then like in the you know you got the maybe a a street light, maybe a little bit of a moon. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got some like. Uh, just some things that are there that are giving you a subtle amount of light, just enough to see your piece, just enough to see your outline and all that stuff. But once something fucks that up, once you pick up your phone and you look at your phone or something stupid like that, or the train's coming and you're looking at the light into the, you yeah. don't know how fast that's going. You and know? so, and so, if you thought it was a freight train, you thought you might have a little bit of time to get out of the way, but Correct. it's an Amtrak and it's doing like seventy or whatever. Correct. And so then, so how are the tracks arrayed so that if you're working on a piece, you would somehow be in a position to be hit? Like, can you physically kind of walk us through how that works? So if you, um, if you approach, I'm not a big train bomber, train piecer or whatever, yeah. but I have been to that yard to paint trains on a couple occasions. Mm -hmm. And so you, uh, when you walk into the yard, you walk from the uh, from the south. So you walk into the yard, or actually, you know, you come in from the other side. So you walk in, and when you get onto the tracks, when you're looking west, <clears throat> you're looking down the line, and the trains that you're gonna paint that they pull over to the side are on your right hand side, and on your left hand side are the couple tracks that are going to be active for trains that are going, sorry, for trains that are going um, west and east. Got it. So Makes you're sense. working on trains on the inside and then so you, right next to that, like how many feet would you say it is? So you got your regular train tracks and yeah. then in between you got, I mean, you got like th maybe like three feet in between three or four feet. Yeah. You know, because you got the... You got the train tracks, and then you got the the other side of the train, and then you got this little space where, if you were standing there, you could stand in the middle of two trains going like this. But most likely, if they're fast trains, you know what I mean, they're gonna take your 
they're going to grab you. Right? Because of the air. Because they're going to the suck air. you yeah. right into that. If there's two thing. freight trains and they're going slow, you could literally sit in the middle of them, you know what I mean? And all both trains would be going right by you. So what happens after, and I, mean, I don't mean any disrespect, but so when, when skates hit, right, by a speeding train. Yes, sir. What happens next? Like, what do they do? Does Amtrak stop? Is there an investigation or do you don't know? So um, there's actually footage of um, of the situation that happened. Blossom was there. Um, the, whatever news channel it was, um, they got the footage and it was I mean, it was on Channel 9, Channel whatever four it was on a bunch of different channels yeah at that time um and so uh they basically i mean the they had to come and grab his body you know Fuck. and they had to come as i mean being that he was over you know he was probably in 350 ish yeah you know um you know when they when you pick up a 350 pound man after he's been hit by a train there's not a 350 pounds left and so if you if um, for people that watched the Can't Be Stopped documentary that got to see the part where Skate got hit by the train, they got to see the footage where it was actually news footage of Blossom, Barry, um, and all of them hanging out um, after the fact, being talked to by the cops. And then you have Metro um, workers and they're pulling the body out from underneath the train and they're putting it on a, um, a gurney. And what you have on the gurney is not 350 pounds, Fuck. Right? right? I mean, it's, you know, you're gonna lose many parts of your body right. as, as you get hit by this train. Um, you know, the next day there was different people that went up to the yard afterwards and there was carnage all up and down. Um, and uh, there was this one guy, Sandman, who was um, from Lads and he was kind of, he was, he was a Satanist. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, you were trying to like soft pedal yeah, that, no, but no, you're no, like, no. there's no yeah. like in between. No, he was yeah. sort of like what you would call worshiping the devil. Yeah, he was a Satanist. <laughs> um, he had done mad time, you know what I mean? He's, yeah. been, he's been a lot of places that other people we know have been, you know? <laughs> um, Same college, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> supposedly he grabbed uh, he grabbed a piece of meat off of the tracks and he... No. Grubbed it up. Cannibalism. He's like, I love... Human flesh. I lo no, he said, I love me some skate. Get the fuck out of here. That's what my boy, my boy Tren was with him. And it's in the documentary, dude. He wow. talks about it. He just grabbed a piece of meat and he's just... And did people get mad at him about that? Or did they just... Ain't nobody there. You weren't getting mad at no nah, sand man. like Blossom? Not, nobody was there. It wasn't, it wasn't but now, afterwards. But... It was after the... It's just like, whatever. Everybody ah. knew Sam. He was, he was from CBS. We called him Satan. He was like that dude that nobody would fuck with. Nobody right. like he was that dude in the party in the corner that everybody was like walking around and he would like Like that dude from Major League. Yeah. Yeah. He was the dude that you didn't want to like <laughs> like if you were really cool with him, he liked like he loved me. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I was down for my shit and I would I would back I, I wouldn't back down to him. Right. I would always like but right. like, he was that guy, lucky no you all know the guy. You know what I mean? He'll you know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Sean until, does that yeah, yeah, all the time until yeah. you until you're like, bah, bah, bah. And then you just get him a couple punches and he'd be like, all right, cool. You're down for your shit now. You know, like, right. Yeah. But I had been in. Um, <laughs> sometimes it's a liability when that guy likes you. You well, know what I mean? Like sometimes when that guy you're trying to avoid, but he's also the guy that like, for whatever reason, you guys have that simpatico. And then you're like, ah, I'm getting sucked into this guy's thing. I don't want to. <laughs> but being, but being, being an. when they're on your side what you know what I mean? I mean and when you're building a when you're building a a gang That's true. You know what I mean? when you're i mean i you know so one time yeah sandman was a bad influence and one time we he got me into a lot of shit and one of the times was to, i don't know if i told you about this on the last one it was just mostly about me getting shot right yeah sounds like we're but, going somewhere <clears throat> somewhere great back into the beverly center yes Shh. 
Sandman. <clears throat> and we're going up. Uh, we're going up to the eighth floor, which is the where the movies are all at and the right. food court's at, right? Right. And um, that whole night, I'd been carrying around a dog chain. A dog chain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> big long one, right? <laughs> Look at Sean, dude. You know, He's so wrapping, excited. Wrapping it around my hand. You know what I mean? <laughs> Swinging it around and shit like that. <laughs> so uh, we're walking up the escalators <clears throat> from the seventh to the eighth. There's two couples walking uh, down the escalator going from the eighth to the seventh. We're walking in front of Sandman. I, no, I think he was in front of me. Anyways, he's kind of like hanging out on the thing and he's looking at these two dudes walking down and the two dudes looking at him and he's like, what the fuck are you looking at? And those dudes are like, well, whatever, I'm looking at you, you know, blah, 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 blah. I didn't even kind of see, it was an interaction between them. <laughs> but all I know is we end up flipping a bitch when we get up to the top. Right. We go back down the escalator, so right. we're on the seventh floor. Right. <clears throat> And so Sandman starts getting into with these dudes. And there's a, mind you, there's two girl, women there with them also. Mm. Right. You know? <clears throat> so it was just, uh, well, what ended up happening is that all of a sudden, one of the dudes takes flight on Sandman. And it, it ends up that Sandman, it just ends up into a melee. Right. <clears throat> it's a great word. And um, so you got, Almost like both of the dudes were on Sandman. This is this is 90, 90, 91, so I'm trying to remember it correctly. But um, <clears throat> I had that chain, oh, right? Yes, you did. And I saw two dudes that were on my boy, and we had a, a Joey Bellinger was there, and fuck Omar was there, a couple of the other homies. But I just start wailing on them, dude. <sighs> Just start fucking hitting the with dude the with the chain, chain, with the dog chain, right? <clears throat> and all of a sudden, dude fucking pulls out a gun and fucking points it right at me. He's like, don't move, motherfucker. Culver City Police. No, what? Shit. Yeah, dude. What? Dude had fucking beefed it up with some cops. And they he was a fucking, he was just a, he had his fucking beanie on, you know what I mean? With the little rubber. No way. <laughs> I mean, he was. <laughs> was his name he was Charles? Thugging. He was thugging. He was thugging, and they were cops, and they were banging. You know what I mean? Cops were banging back then. They were undercover. I'm not sorry. They were off-duty cops, watching a movie with their chicks. All of a sudden, they got into it with a bunch of ruffians. Right. I took off on one of them, two of them. I can't remember who. I was just trying to hit him, get him off my homies. This dude pulls out the gun. As he points it at me, I'm like, oh, shit. He points it over to the other homies because the other homies are over there, right? And I take off. I just run. You just fucking... I ran from the seventh floor all the way over to the other escalators that take you down to Beverly Boulevard. That was what's fucked up. I still took the escalators. I t- I, and then I get down. I told you an old story from the escalators from 89, 88, 89. And then this one's from a couple years later. We got, I got, well, I'm, I'm never supposed to be in the Beverly Center ever again. In my life. I wonder why. Lifetime ban. Because that was my second assault on somebody. I beat up (laughs) another dude in the Beverly Center before that. Right? So I fucking run. I mean, I never stopped running all the way until Fairfax. Man. In the alleys. You know what I mean? I I, I dipped up onto, uh, ran across La Cienega, dipped into the alley, and just fucking booked it. Just kept on running all the way to fucking... Oliver from Lad's fucking pad. All the homies were there. And I is fucking... that is that kind of like a punk move though to be start a fight off duty and then pull the cop shit on somebody? Yeah, that's some bullshit. And let me ask you this: and you but cops get... are full of shit. Hold anyway, on, so. hold on. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. Um, so that was uh, that was Thanksgiving, right? Uh, no, no, no. That was the day before Thanksgiving ish. I think. Right. Um. I end up having tofurkey with my with my mom and dad or stepdad, <laughs> right? Re- they were vegan or uh, vegetarian. They were Sikhs and they lived a you know clean oh, life. And, oh, right. you know, oh, right. and, oh, look at who just popped to life over here. <laughs> He's married to a Sikh. Oh, are you? She's nice. got a dagger and everything. There you go. They Kier- do a lot a of weird pond, huh? cosplay and stuff. Nice. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, Role play. <clears throat> so. Uh, 
Beverly Center was a hangout for us. That's where we all met up. We met up at the Taco Bell or the Beverly Center or the Chevron on Mel- Melrose and Fairfax. Like we had like three or four, like you wouldn't have to call nobody anything. You just show up right there. That's how it was back in the day, right? Everybody knew right around this time you show up in this area and you just, you're going to meet up with everybody. You're right. good, you know? And, um, <clears throat> um, where was I at? You were the, about the day before oh, oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell Furky so, the yes, cops. Tell Furky. So I, I, I go up to the. <laughs> I, I think I take the bus to the Beverly Center. Yeah. And I get up there, and there's Starkey's. Starkey's is the old uh, video game parlor that used to be up there. Video game parlor. <clears throat> so I go in there, start playing fucking 720. I'm playing 720. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden the homie Bugsy rolls up and he's like, yo, Anger. He's like, fucking security's looking for you, dude. Oh. And I'm like, what? I'm like, oh shit. And by the time I like, you know, kind of move like a couple feet, all of a sudden just fucking all kinds of fucking. For what? There were the security guards that had, were looking for me because I had assaulted a police officer that I didn't know it was on the news the <laughs> night before. You know what I mean? Oh, and they were shit. looking for a man. <laughs> <laughs> the dog chain. <laughs> they just fucking grabbed my ass. They fucking. Did they have like a prison or a little cell in that Beverly Hills? They have they a. Had... They, had, they had a little spot. Substation. They had a little chair with my name on it. You know. <laughs> Did you go to the county? I went to. Uh... <laughs> it's fucked up. I feel uh, like overnight they should have just let it. Like if you didn't get them that night, it starts was, over the next day. I was a juvenile. Uh huh. I was a juvenile back then, so I went to uh, I went to the Wilshire station. Man, fucking cops wanted to get me. Oh. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know that I fucking you know like I knew he was a cop and I knew there was some shit, but I didn't know it was to the level it was at. You know what I mean? So I had like I was sitting in the holding cell and I just had every cop whirling up, being like, "That's that motherfucker right there. That's that motherfucker right there." You know? And I was like, "Oh shit." And I went to East Lake, you know, and I go up into uh, go up into my module or whatever, and uh, and then the dude, you know, he's like, oh, he's like, when did you? He's like, oh, that was you. He's like, you beat up that cop, you know, because he had heard it on the news yeah. or whatever on the radio, and and then like that whoever was you know right there working, you know, that was a prisoner, you know, he's like, spread it out to everybody else, you know. So I went to juvenile hall, but I was. Everybody was like, oh, you're, you're getting love. Like, yeah, I was getting a lot of love. You know? Right. How yeah. long were you there for? Uh, a few weeks, I think. And then I yeah. started fighting my case. And um, my mom ended up taking, like, uh, she was a Sikh. So her showing up into um, a court setting hmm. was a lot different than probably any other parent showing up into a court setting, right? Because she was this, you know, if you remember how Sikhs or how they dress now and even how they dress back then, very. You know, big she turban, have like a white all turban? white. You know yeah. what I mean? They yeah. have like the kind of like the sorry type of thing mm-hmm. going over them. So she was able to easily get the judge to send me to Charter Hospital for three months or whatever. And what was Charter Hospital? Just a rehab place. Uh, uh, uh. I'll yeah. So I got the I got a light sentence on that. You know, I got to I kind of got the best of it in a sense, but it all came back to kick my ass later on in life. So. Let me fa- let me. I want to yes, come. I want to come off. Uh, I want to come off that because I want to be able to. I want to ask you what's moving into that because you are a graffiti artist, a well-known graffiti artist from a big group. Give us an update these days with what the hell's going on because we had you on and graffiti was starting to come back and make almost like a revisit. And since then, it seems like it's only continued to grow and become more popular. Right. What's the current state with? graffiti art where is it at where is it going what are you recognizing what are you seeing as somebody that's really a savant of graffiti art like what's going on right now because there's a lot of kids out there tagging and and throwing that word out there graffiti art and you know but what do you think's going um, on out there what's your standpoint on it well I mean, it's ever growing and it's ever changing. I think there's with the advent of Instagram and the ability to kind of build your own page, you know, and kind of create your own mystique. You have a lot of um, where like before you would um, you wouldn't 
you wouldn't have these guys going out and going on a you know two hour a two hour drive to go to a base of a mountain to hike up a mountain to go to a you know an abandoned whatever you know sawmill or something like that in the middle of the desert why would anybody go do that back in the day other than if they had love and and passion for graffiti right you i mean you it's because nobody would see it correct you know, graffiti in writers city, really graffiti writers really want to be seen they don't right. want to do something to not be seen right yeah like why would you want to go out and tag on something that nobody saw it but now because of instagram you can get it seen correct correct so you can so, so it's you can, diffused it's so when one what you're saying is is technology has actually pushed or diffused graffiti outside of normal traditional urban spaces well well because all of a sudden it makes it worth it right right because like now it's not you know you're not worried about a free dudes on the freeway seeing your shit you're not worried about dudes that were driving down la brea you can be like hey i can go to this safe place in the middle of nowhere where nobody's gonna see this thing but oh. everybody's gonna see it right because i'm gonna post it you know so it's um, safer in a sense because you're not gonna get hit by a train yeah but okay so here's the kicker right yeah i go and i <clears throat> i go with my boy merce who's one of those guys he always loves going off to these crazy locations to paint pieces mm. and uh I had told him that about a abandoned mansion that I knew up in the up in the Mulholland Hills, right? And uh, I had gone there with a couple homies, scoped it out, done a couple quick things, been in and out, but I didn't like paint a piece, which a piece takes, you know, an hour, from anywhere from an hour to three hours to seven hours, right? To do mm -hmm. depending on the intricacy of it. So uh, one Sunday we go up there, we're both like kind of being old men, sitting at home doing nothing. So we, you know, texting with each other and it's like, all right, let's go. I go pick them up. We go up there, we fucking get the spot. The most beautiful wall that I've ever painted. I mean, it was like, it was, a, it was this wall that like was originally all uh, little pebbles and rocks. So it was yeah. very porous, right? But then they sanded it down so it was flat. Mm. And it was just like this buttery, like the spray paint just would, mm. would uh, like almost uh, just rich. do what you want. <laughs> you would just you would just hold the can near the wall and it would just move around by itself. Really? It was literally me and Merce were like, this is the best wall I've ever painted. Oh, really? So Merce takes some footage of him, of our stuff, and he gets it from from like you can look out of like this is where we were uh, in the dining room we were in the dining room painting the wall right and when you look outside you you're looking towards kind of the hollywood hills but like he just kind of like took a pan you know what i mean he was like Shh, and then showed our shit right and before i know it the next weekend comes up and i see somebody inside the fucking the mansion and these kids are fucking and the dude he ended up he, he was a ex crewmate of mine which is cool like i don't mind that the fools went and painted and i'm not you know it's not like it's my spot it's just a spot right but people are hawking you so you're looking at they're looking for what you're doing and they're looking and i do it too i see people painting and i'm like what's that in the background oh i know that yeah, area yeah, oh yeah. that's up in the so and so or that's right. off of this you know you like you do that you know yeah, and you so it's a math together and figure out it's a whole nother it's a whole nother ball game when people can do that when people can go and paint something that doesn't mean shit and then it means everything because what would be in los angeles okay and let's just stop fucking around mm -hmm. all right let's get serious let's do it let's get serious what would be the riskiest and the best and the ultimate fucking place to throw a piece up yeah um i think it's all i think it's all circumstantial no you no no I mean? for you let's let's not for let's me not, let's not be diplomatic in in, in wishy washy but, but that's not my that's not my um my forte i'm not a um so uh, like i haven't done you know like i went into a i went into an abandoned mansion which is a safe safe much safer than walking down la brea right and doing graffiti just on the side of the street right right but like a lot of dudes like like uh, just people are getting spots man like there's dudes like that are just uh there's a crew called yr um they were actually you know baba mm -hmm. no 
Mm. You should know Baba. You should get okay. Baba on the show. Okay. Yeah. Well, Baba's a dope. Yeah. Anyways, he started YR, which was Yard Rats back in the day. They mm. did a lot of freeway bombing, bombing in general. And right now they have this thing called Operation Under. And they just go tunnel surfing. They just go all the way down in the tunnels, like far down beneath LA. Oh. And they're doing graph down there. That's and there, a lot of people, people do, excuse me, people do bring spray paint down there. But once you get into, you know, the tunnels, then you have, you know, not a lot of airflow. So right. then all the aerosols oh. just sitting in there. So a lot of dudes are bringing down, you know, actual paint and brushes. And they'll do most of their artwork and everything with paintbrushes because it's just you have to adapt to this to the place that you're at. Yeah, have you ever you been know? down in those tunnels? Nah, I'm good on the streets. I don't want to go up high <laughs> and I don't want to go well, down low. Well, I just leave, I just say right on the streets. I'm I'm from that era where like I clue I I grew up. I mean I I I, I would climb up a fire escape to get to a rooftop to do the rooftop but i'm not doing no daredevil shit right, right. i'm but not there's, doing there's that guys that that's what they're trying to do right yeah they're trying to if you know sit on sit out on the uh -huh. side of a bridge with something that's just like that ledge right there and mm. then all you have is your one arm to push up against there and your legs to push up against the i-beam so you're pushing up against the part of an i-beam up here and then you're pushing your legs against the i-beam and you're 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 the stilt, you know what I mean, and then you're trying to you're sitting right. there, painting at the same time. I mean, it's just totally fucking nerve wracking to me, dude. <laughs> but dudes are really good at doing it, you know what I mean. And like L. A. has some of the best daredevil taggers that have ever done it. For um, sure. What about okay? So that's one aspect of like what would be the best is daredevil tagging. What about there's da daredevil tagging? There's going so a lot of people hit billboards. Right. And they call them corporates. Or there's a whole uh. the whole Instagram all about billboard graffiti, right? Yeah. Um, that started in the early 90s. The AM7 crew were some of the first to do these. They called them corporates back then. And they started getting called billies or billboards or whatever. But those are the, um, those are the, those are the, those are something that, you know, people will go up there. They'll hit a good billboard. They'll turn off the light. They'll rock their shit, then they'll turn the light back on, and then, boom, their shit might run for, like, two weeks, three weeks. You know right. what I mean? But you're getting major, major looks. You know what I mean? You're getting tons of people fucking seeing that shit all the time, right? Right. Um, one of the fucking dudes that I really like, his cho choice of spots, um, is this dude, Merch. Um, he's from OTR Crew. And he, him, and this guy Lagger just hit the um, that uh, public storage building off of Beverly. You can see it from the 101 freeway. Oh, is that? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. They hit a just a beautiful spot. It was like, like the building goes up and then it like, you know, it, it kind of castles up and like there's a level. You yeah. Know what I mean, and it goes up the next level and they hit. I mean, just a beautiful spot, you know <laughs> yeah i did that just like is that that must be an indian thing huh? uh, no it's an italian uh, thing get the fuck out of here yeah what about you guys are italian uh, so should have known there's a guy there's a guy buge buges from um from bam c he hits a lot of cool spots a lot of dudes are into these ladders mm. so you got these collapsible ladders <gasps> right yeah and they just roll like this, this dude buge does it fucking sick dude i just see that f he just rolls that ladder up pop, pop 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 and then he instead of going like in painting traditional spot like on the floor he's doing it you know at the top of the ladder all the way across and so that's like a new thing that people are doing they're you know going into yards and they're doing um pieces but up on ladders and up above everybody or people are coming up and doing roller pieces just doing with house paint right and that's like you know that's a way to save mo save money on your what you're doing and then you get to go up really big because you're using rollers right know? and what about like official game. or establishment spots like is it is there uh, people that are dedicated to like hitting city hall or a place where it's like it's not necessarily daredevil -y in in the in the physical sense but it's like you got they they'll if they get you you're fucking toast. Well, I mean you got a dude like Chaka. 
who you guys right, should have yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did you the whole reach out, yeah, did You guys thing. should reach out to him. But he's, I mean, he's doing a lot of crazy high-profile spots. He just did a, um, he was working with the dudes from Born and Raised, and um, they did a, he did the front of a freeway, um, where, right where the 6th, 7th, and 8th Street exit is off the 110. Yeah. He did the front of the, the exit sign, the green exit sign. He did a huge ass chaka on it, you know, silver, Fucking beautiful, sick. yeah. Um, and that dude's been doing graffiti since you know the early late late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now he's still leading leading the charge. Right so, on. Hell yeah, man. We got some history today. That was fucking fantastic. That was a lot of fucking stories all in one episode. It took us all over the place. Man, he's a he's a fucking encyclopedia <sighs> when it comes to writing. Hey, where are you? Hey, let our let our uh, listeners know. Uh, what was that? What number show did we say that was? One one five. So go go after you've heard this. Go listen to one one five. Get a little more history on anger, and, white crow. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a hard luck fucking contest right now. Whoever blasts up 115 and takes a picture of it and sends it to us, I'm going to fucking take you out to dinner. I'll buy you whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you a get a whole happy thing. meal. You yeah. get fucking everything not on the even McDonald's on the, menu. Not even on the child's menu. Right. You can go you to the big, go to the big table. Boy, right. right. Nice. So listen to that. Uh, <laughs> Anger, where do they find you on Instagram? Where can they peep out CBS and you and all that? Um, our crew Instagram is CBS crew. Mm-hmm. Or at CBS Crew, mm-hmm. um, you can find me at Anger CBS Crew. Um, we have a bunch of different. I mean, we have a tattoo. A lot of my homies do tattoos, so we have like a tattoo Instagram. We had an Instagram called Can't Be Stop the Movie when we did our documentary. But our main one, our one that we, our bread and butter is CBS Crew. Dope. Right on. So where go can check people, them out. Where can people get your documentary if they want to take a look at it? Where should they go? Um, the documentary is in flux. Um, the guy that was from our crew that helped put the documentary together, we ended up booting him out of our crew. So he's no longer with us. Got it. Um, we would... Supposedly, the movie was supposed to get onto net, uh, digital download of some sort. Mm. It's been about... Four or five years that that's been in the making. I don't know what the fuck happened, but somebody dropped the ball. It hasn't made it onto any digital download, and we're really not. Uh, we don't. We don't. We don't do anything with it. It's not our entity. So which, if which you is feel a, like you can do something with that film, get a hold of them and help them out because they can't get it out. Right. Well, I think the main thing is, is it's. I think it's. Sh- I think it's shelved for some reason or the other. I don't know who. Well, somebody needs to reach out a producer or somebody that can help you get, get like that thing out. Sounds like an opportunity. Sounds like an opportunity. Well, I think the opportunity is really just um, <laughs> the people that are holding on to it. Um, they need to give it up. Well, that's an opportunity. Is that's what called I'm an that's what I'm opportunity. Yeah. The like, right people might be able to get them to let go. I of that wouldn't. Thing. I wouldn't. No. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind buying it back. Right. So I that's no what I'm problem. saying. I have right. No problem Werner, why we're putting it out Werner there. Werner Herzog is a yeah. huge fan of the show. Right. Mm-hmm. Of course, he did uh, Grizzly Man and all those other fucking great documentaries. Right. Uh, he, he might really, want to. Yeah. He might want to do it. So. Right. So this is um. It. Yeah, and that documentary is old. You know what I mean? The, we stopped filming in 2000. So good, better yet. 2014. So there is so much new information about CBS crew. Sequel. So you know? jump Sequel. on Instagram, follow Anger. Netflix, Thank yes, you, sir. brother, for Let's coming go. on. My Thank man, you for, Anger, CBS. Thank you for having me, guys. Hell Super yeah. Appreciate Great it. fucking guess. I what love it. Ovando Bowen, LLP, we were Braves of Court. Let, let the Tomahawks fly the best legal representation that money can buy. And sometimes anger stops by the office and we fucking chop it up. Yeah, yeah. Sir. Right. yeah. awesome. Yeah, sir. Nice. <laughs> Sean, what do you got? Sean Amumin on the media for all your audio <laughs> podcasts. And you don't forget to hit us up at hardluckshow.com. Awesome. Nice. Always listen to Hard Luck Show Monday, oh. Wednesday, and Friday. That's right. Hey, www. Super can I give a couple shout outs? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. I want to shout out uh, to all my crew, yeah. um, all my homies that I've come up with in the last 30 years, all my dudes that put it down for Los Angeles graffiti, um, 
Let's see. I want to give it up to my wife and my kids for always putting up with my bullshit. Mm. And, mm. Uh, and the youthful and the youthful skin. And the useful and all and to all my lotions and potions. Yes, sir. Beautiful. I love Wonderful. it. And R.I.P. Skate, big skate. Yes, yes sir. Right. Yep. Um, Rest in peace to Skate, Rob, Nace, <laughs> Animal, Bazaar, Script, and Gavin, Sleaze. Fuck, there's so many motherfuckers that I could name right now, but love you all, man. There you go. There you go. www.supermaxhardware.com. <laughs> Check us out some tanks and some caps. Summer drop. Get some. Uh, at Cookies SF. Pick up some gear, some good flour, and vibes rolling paper. Shout out to Burn. Shout out to Esteban Ori and the Soul Assassins. We're out of here. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Esteban is a cool ass motherfucker. Yeah, he is.